Okay, so let's do a basic kettlebell series, kind of a preparatory series before we were to get into doing any, you know, bigger and heavier swinging type movements. So, I'd like to start with actually taking your heavier kettlebell, setting it out in front of you a little bit, nice ready stance, and First of all, just a deadlift, say, standing up and then sitting back, maybe lightly touching, shoulders draw back a little, arms just hang down. So, pretty easy move, even with your heavier kettlebell. I want to show a side view. Sitting back, weight in the heels. Notice the chest staying lifted. Right, much easier on the back. Okay. Now, in fact, we could go to one arm at a time. Basic variation. Okay. Still pretty easy. Getting the grip and shoulder warmed up a little bit. Now let's set it down to switch, and a few on this arm, get a side view. It's nice to draw back a little bit more there. Now if I set it down to switch, alternating every rep a few times, It's a nice variation. But now let's look at switching at the top. So one arm deadlift, alternating. Okay. And this is starting to give the feel for switching the bell from hand to hand. But before we get into that, I just want to show that the deadlift, like a squat, is such a strong movement. Not much difference between them. You could take two kettlebells together, pinch grip, not literally, and you can do your deadlift with two bells. Okay? And even that is still pretty comfortable. So, really warming up the legs and back. So, let me have you take maybe what would be your lighter kettlebell if you have multiples. Though as we go, you can really get a lot out of these moves by increasing the weight. Around the body pass. Okay, and switching can be nice to use the hand. Keep your abs engaged, maybe move the bell a little quicker. Really a nice exercise for what it is, just warming up. Hand. We're going to look at taking it up and just alternating every time around to really work some core. Okay, but now let's look at taking it between the legs with the squat. So a pretty wide stance, send it back and around. So I like to have you stand up fully in between. I mean you could stay low if you wanted, but it's nice to come up in more of a full squat. Okay, so Warming up. Now let's go the other way. Go back to front. Keeping the chest up a little bit. Sitting back. Basic squat form. Okay. Now let's look at doing a lunge. 
So, if I step forward with the opposite foot from the hand that's holding the bell, I'm going to bend the back knee down, send it under, and then step back. So let's alternate those a few times, a bunch of times. Now I want to show a side view. So let's take a long enough stance. So when you bend the back knee down, keeping your chest lifted, the front knee doesn't jut forward very much. Make a basic lunge form. So just to keep the bell moving, get a rhythm. Okay. Now let's switch it where we step with the same foot that's holding the bell. So outside to in. Works both ways. Side view. Okay. Now I could do this with a reverse lunge, would be a fine option. Okay. In either direction. But let's go ahead and move on. So but I want you to switch the grip here. So instead of the pretty standard uh, fingers around the front, come around the sides of the bell where the thumbs are in front and your fingers are around the back and get down there pretty low. Now I want to have you do a bicep curl from here so the bell turns upside down. Really has an interesting feeling to it compared to with hand weights or barbells. Okay. So there's quite a bit of wrist action there. In fact, we could accentuate that a little bit. But now let's go up overhead with a press. Okay, so it's nice to really get it up there. Take the arms back. And just as many as you feel you need here, warming up. So, let's do one of my favorite exercises. They're called halos. It's where the bell goes around and hangs down and back. Goes all the way around, turns upside down in front. So keep it up, about face level. I mean, it could lower down here, it's not bad. But keeping it up is a little better. Maybe speed it up. And really rolling through the wrists here. And really working all around the shoulders and the core. Let's go the other way a few times. Okay, trace that halo. Okay, now if that's getting a little bit tired, let's go ahead and rest the bell back there. This is an interesting series, little option for you here. Could be to just do a squat, resting the weight on the upper back, like you might with a barbell in a rack. Okay, chest staying lifted, sitting back. Okay, so you could keep doing that if you like, if it's not okay for your lower back to do what is sometimes called a heavy good morning. And this could be done with a barbell as well. It's really a classic old school exercise. It's to hinge at the hips, knees slightly bent, coming up, maybe going a little deeper, if it's feeling okay. Now certainly you could modify, keep it as short as you need to, and again, maybe as you do a few, you feel you can go further, and maybe you can go all the way down, even to touch elbows to shins, or whatever, right? Okay, so strengthening lower back. So with resting the bell there, we gave the arms a little rest. So let's go ahead and get back into now triceps. Pressing overhead, tricep extension. 
Now, when you come down, make sure you don't bonk yourself on the vertebrae back there. This is a non-contact sport at this point. Now, maybe when you come up, you turn the bell to that bottoms up position. Really staying engaged through the abs, so we're not arching the back. Maybe keeping it up there, doing a few wrist flexions. Now, one other thing, if you're feeling adventurous, probably in a wide stance, is the overhead squat, right? Really trying to keep the chest up and sit back. Okay, let's bring it to the front and down. So, that should get you ready to work. And for the next series, we'll look at doing some pretty uh, vigorous swings.